first tonight, part of the reason Senator John McCain was such a large figure in American life was because of a remarkable personal story that began long before he even got into politics. McCain, who died Saturday after a year-long battle with brain cancer, was the son and grandson of Navy admirals. As a jet pilot in the Vietnam War, he was shot down over Hanoi. He was badly injured and spent the next five and a half years as a prisoner of war, often tortured by his captors. McCain told his story in more than half a dozen books, all of them co-written by his longtime aide and friend Mark Salter, who knew him as well as anyone outside of his family. For many years, Mark Salter has had a summer home in Maine in Castine, and we talked to him in July about his friend, his boss, his hero, John McCain. When you started working for John McCain, were you, at that time, uh, unusually impressed with him, or was he just kind of another senator and you were a guy who was looking for a job? I, I, I liked him personally, right off the bat. He's a very personable person, very demonstrative, very casual. Even the interns called him by his first name. Um, he was just a very relaxed, funny, personable, energetic guy that wanted to get into a lot of things. So he was fun to be with. In the late 1990s, Salter helped McCain write Faith of My Fathers. It told the story of McCain's father and grandfather, both of them admirals in the U.S. Navy, and of McCain's career as a Navy pilot who was shot down over Vietnam and spent five and a half harrowing years as a prisoner of war. You'd known him for 10 years at that point, and obviously we're friends with him, we're close with him, but still, how difficult was it for you to capture his voice in prose? You know, I always joke that uh, the trick is getting the voice, his voice out of my head. When I was his chief of staff, I'd be in the office 60 to 80 hours a week, and then when we were in the office, he was on the phone, you know, so it's uh, getting it out of my head. It's, you know, I'm not, um, it would, would, is harder than getting it in there. 2000, he runs for president in pursuit of the Republican nomination. He was running a pretty streamlined campaign, didn't have a lot of money, had the bus, particularly in New Hampshire, the Straight Talk Express, kind of living off the land campaign, an underdog, and rarely is John McCain happier in any endeavor than when he is the underdog facing daunting odds. Yes, that's his favorite thing. <laughs> you know, we've had, obviously this last year, we've had a lot of time to sort of reflect when we're talking to him, when you look back on things, and we, we, we still, especially the New New Hampshire portion of that campaign, campaign, that 2000 campaign, we both look back with uh, very sentimental nostalgia. And it was probably the, the most fun either of us has ever had in politics. You know. He says that aside from Arizona, New Hampshire is his favorite state. Yeah. He truly loves New Hampshire and he its does. people. He does. And uh, when he won it the second time, when he won the New Hampshire primary in 2008 for the second time, he just, he just, um, he turned to his wife, I remember it, he said, these people have been so good to me. He is not a man prone to self-pity. No. There's a passage in the book, mm -hmm. I'll read you a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Many an old geezer like me reaches his later years wishing he had lived more in the moment, had savored his days as they happened. Not me, friends, not me. I have loved my life, all of it. Some things didn't work out the way I hoped they would. I had difficult moments and a few disappointments, but by God, I enjoyed it every damn day of it. Yes, sir, he did. But he also wanted people to understand how fortunate he considered himself for having been able to devote 60 years of his life to the service of this country. He, he, he always says, and we were joking, we would call the book at one time, The Luckiest Man on Earth. I'm the luckiest guy you'll ever meet. He's an exuberant, hopeful, optimistic, even though he's got a dark you know, sensibility sometimes. It's a, it's a, I've always joked he's, he's, uh, uh, he's either the most romantic cynic or the most cynical romantic I've ever met in my life. He never stays in one spot for long. You know, uh, he shakes off the bad and runs towards the good. You know, and uh, the next experience he's sure will be better than the last one. And it's a good way to live. How do you think history is going to remember John McCain? Um, uh, fondly. But I don't know that Americans understand how much he's appreciated overseas. It really is remarkable. He's known almost everywhere, and almost everywhere uh, in, in closed, oppressive societies. Uh, he's considered a champion of the oppressed. I have a daughter who's in the Peace Corps, and um, she's serving overseas in Southeast Asia right now, and she lives in a rural province. And she was talking to one of the locals, and the locals was bemoaning the state of 
the, their politics and its uh, autocratic regime they live under. And so we need help from America. We need help from America. We need freedom here. We need help from America. But John McCain is fighting for us. I don't know, that's a guy that lives in the back of beyond. Not, not, not super educated, not cosmopolitan or anything like that. Not just knows his name, but knows, knows him to be a friend. There are people all over this world that feel that way about him, and I think that's, that's how he'd like to be remembered. Mark Salter talked about the zest that John McCain had for life, that when you were hanging out with him, he always wanted to know, you know, what books have you read? What, what <laughs> movies have you seen? What's going on? What's, who have you talked to lately? Was, he just always wanted to know what was going on, always wanted to be in on the action. And he had a great anecdote that, that reflected McCain's enthusiasm. McCain, of course, lived in Arizona. He and his wife had a place on a, on a brook. Not much water in Arizona, so, but it, it, it was falling water. And, Salter said that McCain would talk about it as if it were Niagara Falls. He was just so excited. He loved the place so oh. that uh, it was just, again, that zest for life in all things that he did. A lot of enthusiasm.